Okay, and welcome to today's video on algebra, and we're looking at factors and the highest common factor. Okay, so by the end of this video, we should be able to determine the factors and factor pairs of numbers. We should be able to determine the factors and factor pairs of terms that include pronumerals or letters, and we should also be able to determine the highest common factor of a pair of terms or numbers. All right, so let's have a look at what factors are. So basically, factors are the numbers that you multiply together to get another number. Um, these numbers can be positive or negative. And if you have a look at the example, if we have a look at the example just here, we can see that the factors of six, um, when we multiply numbers together, we get six times one, two times three. So we get this combination of numbers that multiply together. This basically means that the factors of six are one, two, three. And six, they're the factors, they're the numbers that when we combine multiply together. Now, as you can see inside these numbers, that they come in pairs that actually make up that number. And we're going to call those factor pairs. So if you have a look at these two numbers here, six and one and two and three, they're actually the factor pairs of six. Also, um, as I've got down the bottom here as well. Generally, if the number is positive, we only include the positive numbers in the list of factors. However, um, for the above example, you could also include minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 6 as factors, because if we multiply two negatives together, we get a positive as well. But in most cases, we're looking for the highest common factor, um, and in that case, it's generally a positive, a positive number. Not in all cases, but in most cases, it's a positive number. All right, so let's have a look at an example listing the factors of 12. Now I'm just going to show you a little example of how I go about it. Generally, <clears throat> I'll write the number, and then I'll write a list of I'll write a list of the factors underneath that. So here, the factors of 12 are 1 and 12. So the numbers that multiply together to make 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, when you actually get better at this, you can actually start just listing them in order um, but in this case we can just see they're not they're not in our in number order I can write these in number order one two three four six and twelve so you can actually see there that they actually come in number order so they're the factors of twelve so the combination of those numbers that multiply together uh, some of the factor pairs here would be one and twelve if you have a look um, you know, three times four so they're the factor pairs that multiply together to make 12 and they'll come in handy when we do our, um, our factorization all right so let's have a look now if a number involves pronumerals we actually need to take into account the letter as one of the factors in say the factor pair um, and i'll show a little way of i like to represent that with this so let's have a look at the factors of 6a so i'm just going to leave six there so what we do let's break down the number part and the letter part and see if we can uh, and determine what the, the factors are. So if we look at the factors of six uh, with the numbers, we can see that it's one, two, three, and six. So that's what make up the six. So when we multiply those numbers together, and we've also got the A here. So we can also put the A, and I'll generally put the A um, in, in a column and in a column on the right so to separate that. That basically means that any of these factors can have the a included in it as part of the um, as part of the factor pair. For example, six a we might have two a, and that will be multiplied by three. All right, so have a look at the next one, twelve x y. So the factors of twelve are one, two, three, four, six, and twelve. So 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And then if we have a look at um, xy here, we'll see that we can either be xy or we can have x as a, as a factor or y as a factor. So any of those combinations, it might be 2x times 6y or it might be 3xy times 4. There, they're factor pairs of that, but you can see that the um, the pro numeral can actually be a part of a factor. All right, the last one we've got here is 4a squared. So if we have a look at the, the factors here, we've got 1, 2, 
and 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. And then for a squared, we've actually, a squared is a squared. But what are the other factors of a squared? Well, it's actually a times a. So we've got a as another factor. So here we could have um, a squared times 4. We could have um, 4a times a. There are some of the different, there are some of the different uh, factor pairs for that. All right, so now what we're going to look at is looking at the highest, finding the highest common factor of two terms. So basically what we now do is we list both, both the, uh, for both terms, we list, list the common, highest, the common factors, sorry, the factors, and then we actually just determine what's the highest common one out of the two lists. So if we look at 12 and 18, we've got 12 here, we've got 18 here, so if we have a look at the numbers, so for 12 we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And for 18, we've got 1, 2, 3, 3 times 6, 2 times 9, and 1 times 18. So if we have a look at the two lists there, have a look at the two lists, we can see that the highest common factor for both of those is actually 6. So we'll actually write here that the highest HCF equals 6. We want to actually identify that. Um, in that. Over on the next one here, we've got what's find the highest common factor of 4a and 10a. So if we look at 4a and 10a, so for 4a, the numbers are 1, 2, and 4, like we did in the previous slide, and a. And for 10a, we've got 1, 2, 5, and 10 as the number factors, and we've also got a as. Um, as the, the pronumeral factor. So if we have a look at the highest common factor, we can see that 2 is the highest numeral, numerical factor, but the a is also a factor. So the highest common factor for this actually equals 2a. That's the highest common factor in that. A couple more examples. So 15y minus 12. So if we have a look at 15y, we've got minus 12. So 15y, we've got 1, 3, 5, and 15. 15, and we've also got the y. And then we've, for minus 12, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Now because it's a minus, we've also got minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 6, and minus 12. Um, and let's have a look what's the highest common factor. Well, if we have a look at the numbers, 3 and 3 is the highest common factor, so the HCF equals 3. Alright, over here the last one we're going to do, we've got 20x and we've got 24x squared. So if we have a look at the factors of these, of 20 we've got 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. So they're the numbers that multiply together to make 20. And then we've got x. And then over here for 24, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Then 4 times 6 is 24. 3 times 8 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. And 1 times 24. So there's a fair list of numbers there. But that's there all the factors. And then we've got x squared. So this actually breaks down into x squared. But then we've also got x times x. So x is also a factor. So if we have a look down the list, what's the highest common one there? Uh, if we have a look in here, we see that 4 and 4 is the highest common factor. And we've also got the x that's the common factor. So the highest common factor of these two, excuse my age, equals 4x. And that's going to play an important role when we do our factorization. Okay, thank you for watching. Hopefully you got something out of that video. And we'll see you in our next video.